Are you broke, battling to make ends meet, continuously running out of money and never having money available to pay your bills or to pay those unforeseen expenses that always seem to crop up periodically? If this sounds like you, then this video is for you as I'm here to help you. Coming up. Greetings and welcome back to my channel. Tim here again with another How To With Basics, bringing you this time a mini series on personal finances, where we will be covering all the steps needed to ultimately get you to the stage of budgeting to save money and more. Now, before I start my usual little pet talk, which I always tend to do, I want you firstly to get your head into the right space or thinking which it needs to be. Okay, I want to start by asking you a question or for you to ask yourself a question. And that is, why do you work? Clean your teeth, wash your clothes, bath or even cook, including having vegetables on your plate. Now, allow me to answer these questions for you as after all, I'm the oracle. Now, you were told and taught those things at school, and it was also drummed into your head by your parents. Hence, you were programmed or brainwashed in a good way to do all those things every day. Am I right? Yet, you were never told, taught, or told how to manage your finances. Don't you think that this is equally important as all those other things? And without doing this, none of the aforementioned is possible. Think about it. Now, I appreciate that when most people hear the word budgeting, they run away from it, as most believe that word to be some financial jargon or you need to be an accountant to do such things. Well, here you are wrong. It once again comes down to what you were taught and told. The only skill level that you'll actually need is a basic school understanding of how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And if you can do that, then everything financial is no longer rocket science and it becomes just a stroll in the park. What, I, what I'm going to teach you today is extremely basic and very simple, yet for many, it is not going to be that easy. And why do I say that? It's because you have developed a bad habit and that you have become addicted to it. So, like kicking any addiction, be it alcohol, drugs, gambling, etc., accept the fact that you are going to have some setbacks. But you need to be strong, work hard at it and make this your new hobby, as the rewards will be your financial gain. Now, in such event that you have a problem with basic mathematics, then I suggest that you go buy yourself a cheap calculator or have, or if you have an Android phone, then it comes with a calculator app. Or even if you have a laptop or other computer in the home, you will have a calculator application in there as well. So the problem is solved. Here in part one, I'm going to talk you through your first steps, and that is setting up a basic income and expenditure statement or we will call it a worksheet, as that will become your main working document from where you will take all the information necessary to create a budget and also to see your current financial situation. Now, what is an income expenditure statement? It is a basic spreadsheet or document that you need to create where you will record all your income, such as your earnings, be it wages, salary, or other income from some other source. Then, on a separate page, you will record all your expenditure, such as where all your money goes, or where you spend it, such as your bills, food, etc. Okay, what is a budget? A budget is merely a plan, or your plan, where your money is going to be coming from. 
and where you will be spending it. And hopefully, you will eventually be allocating some cash towards the savings account. All of that we will be discussing when we get to that part, which I believe is in part three of this mini-series. Now, I wish to emphasize that the purpose of this video is to teach and help you. It's not here for entertainment purposes. This subject matter is, is, is extremely easy. However, if you get lost anywhere, then please save this video and play it back again, pausing where and when necessary. In such event that you still have some difficulty with this, then please feel free to message or email me at howtowithbasics at gmail.com and I will gladly help you further. Now, I'm offering my personal help with all good intentions and free of charge. So in view of that, I ask you to please use my advice to help you, but don't abuse my kindness, such as sending spam emails and or asking me for money. If you do that, I will consider it spam and delete it without the courtesy of even a reply. History teaches us that you will never advance nor learn any lessons in life if others are continuously bailing you out financially. Lessons and progressions in life is only learned by you working with the tools and knowledge and then applying it yourself. Hence everything that I will be giving to you in this series to use so that you can learn to stand on your own feet again. Now, the very first step is that we need accurate control and management of our finances. Hence, the number one priority is a very disciplined system and recording, or also called accounting of every penny that we earn and spend. This will give you the ultimate power and control needed to take command of your finances. Now, if you are not willing to do that, then the other option is, of course, very simple. Continue the way you are, plod through life, and stay in debt. All right. I assume that if you are still here with me, you have chosen to listen and willing to make a positive change in your personal finances so that you can afford to pay that next unexpected bill or buy your next car or whatever else. The last thing you need to accept and understand is the old saying, no pain equals no gain. So you may need some reprogramming to change the way you were taught to think and how you previously managed your money. Okay, so we now know what we are in for. Let's get into it. Now, to correctly manage your finances and to ensure that you get out of debt, you need both an income and expenditure statement and a budget. But we won't get into the debate of which comes first, the chicken or the egg scenario, as both of those fall into the same category. As I stated previously, you need to extrapolate information from your income and expenditure statement for your budget. So this being the reason why we are starting here first, and secondly, to get you into the driver's seat of overseeing and starting to manage your finances and see where you currently are, financially speaking. Here we have a couple of choices in that you can either do this daily, weekly, and or monthly. The bottom line is that everything, and I mean everything, i.e. every penny needs to be recorded. The minute you start to overlook one penny or one cent, then it becomes as easy as to overlook a thousand dollars or a thousand euro, as every penny adds up over time to thousands. If you're computer literate and can or know how to use a spreadsheet, then wonderful. Microsoft Excel or equivalent can do that job. Alternatively, you can download Microsoft Money, which is license free and will cost you nothing. 
thus may be easier than creating spreadsheets as they already have most of the needed templates already set up and all you need to do is enter your information. If you're not computer literate, then you will need to get yourself either an A4 hardcover book or some A4 sheets and a lever arch file and do it the old fashioned bookkeeping way. Okay, enough jibber jabber. You need two pages, one for your income and the other for your expenditure. Each you will clearly mark with either the week, number, month and year. Then also on the income page, you need three columns, date, description and amount. And the expenditure page, you will need four col columns. I'll get to that shortly. Starting on the income page. Now, this is your actual monies in or received. So here, we will use your take home pay after deductions, i.e. termed as your net pay. Enter the date your money was received. Then under the description column, enter wages. Here you can write in the source of the income, namely employer name and your name or your initials. Then under the column on the same line, the actual net amount of wages or monies that you received. If you have a second job, then on the following line again, repeat the same process. If you have a partner and your partner is also working, then on the next line, again, you can repeat the same process, but then with your partner's name and details, etc. Right at the bottom of the page, draw a line across under the description and write in total. Then under the amount column, add up all the income that you entered and write in the sum of the income that now becomes the total income or earnings for that entire period. Okay, now let's move on to your expenditure page. Here, you can always use the template with the most commonly used list of expenses that the average household will have. Now, I will try and put a, a sample of this list in the description below in case you wish to copy and paste it. And if need be, you can tweak it to suit your needs by adding other items or deleting those that are, of course, not applicable to you. I will quickly run through them just to give you an idea of what uh, information we'll be looking for and capturing. You will also see that I have created 13 categories. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I hope you're not superstitious, but it is lucky for some. Now, if this really worries you, then create a 14th category, such as savings. Okay, I know that it may sound strange putting savings under an expense, but after all, it is coming out of your income. So it has to be deducted from it as per all your other expenses. And then under each category, I have created subcategories, which are applicable to the main category. This normally helps when you're quickly scanning over all your totals of your expenses. And if you need to start cutting some of those expenses, which of course you will, then you need to then have a closer look at the breakdown of all those expenses, which will then be itemized in the subcategories. Okay, share the up. The first category I have created is main bills. Under that, I created the following subcategories that would typically fall under bills, such as be it your mortgage or rent, electricity, water, home heating or gas, utilities, internet, mobile phone or cell phone, uh, landline phone, Netflix, refuse collection, etc. Those typical type of uh, bills. The second category that I've created is car slash um, transport. 
Under that category are created subcategories uh, sub such as uh, loan, car loan payment, car insurance, road tax or car license, NCT, which is uh, basically your certificate of roadworthiness, which normally you're going to do annually or whatever, repairs and maintenance, petrol, diesel or gas for the car, car wash, parking, taxi and or public transport. The third category, groceries. Here I simply threw them all together. Now you can also split that up into subcategories such as food, cleaning materials, etc. I'll leave that up to you to decide what you want to do. The fourth category is insurance other. With such uh, subcategories as house insurance, life insurance, funeral or other insurance. Fifth category, medical expenses, with subcategories sub such as medical insurance, um, hospital clinic, doctor's fees, prescriptions, general medicine, optometrist, and uh, medical other. Sixth category, education, with subcategories being school, college fees, school uniforms, school books, school projects, exam fees, sports fees and kit, and school other. Seventh category, category clothing. Likewise here, you can add subcategories if you wish. The eighth category, household expenses, with its subcategories such as home repairs and maintenance, tools and equipment, garden maintenance, furniture and fittings. The ninth category being bank charges. Tenth category, treats. And in that subcategory, I've created um, coffee shops, alcohol, cigarettes, dining out, be it lunch or dinners, holidays and or getaway breaks. Eleventh category, personal care with subcategories such as haircuts, etc., beauty, cosmetics and perfumes, etc. The twelfth category, twelfth category being, sorry, pets, with subcategories being food, uh, medical, pet insurance, kennel fees, and other. Last category, miscellaneous. Now, under that category, I chose to use some subcategories such as printing and stationery, postage, Christmas, and birthday presents. Now, as I have said before, you can add a fourth category, bean savings. Here you can add that under expense as it will be coming out your income um, as I previously made mention. Okay, now we have our template list. And as I said before, you can capture your expenditure or spending either daily, weekly, or monthly. The choice is yours. But the rules and the criteria remain exactly the same. In view of our expenditure, list having categories and subcategories, I want you to make four columns here under your expenditure page. One, your first column, date. Second column will be your category and subcategory uh, list, but just stagger your subcategory list uh, slightly to the right. Your third column, subcategory total, and your fourth column, your category total. Every time you spend a penny, and guys, I mean every time you spend one penny or one cent, ask for a receipt and keep those receipts in a safe place in your home till, you, till your chosen time to capture your expenditure into your working document. Now, if you don't or cannot get a receipt, I suggest keep a little notepad just to jot down that purchase or to make a note of it in, note, in the, your notepad app, I think it's called, within your phone. Okay, now sit down quietly and go through every receipt to check date of spend and what you bought, be it a newspaper, cup of coffee or meat for dinner. Add these to your expenditure page under its correct category or subcategory. Once you have done this, you can then 
either save or discard those old receipts unless of course you need them for either a possible exchange back to store or for tax purposes. Now you can either add all your totals for each subcategory. Bear in mind the category total will be the total of all its subcategories which you can do at the end of each week, fortnight or monthly. Then tally up all the category totals and the subcategory totals. This will be a quick check to see if you have added them up correctly as your totals for all the categories must be the same total as all your subcategories. If they are different then recheck your addition as you obviously made a mistake adding them up and then correct it. Then you need to subtract your total income or your earnings from your total expenditure. You will now see if you have either a surplus or a deficit. In other words, a profit or a loss for that period. If you have a surplus, give yourself only a half a pat on the back. If, however, you have a deficit, hence the reason why you are having financial problems. It is then time to sit down with a strong cup of coffee and relook at all your expenditure for that week or that month in question. I suggest you take a highlighter pen and mark then all the nice to have categories and all subcategories and then just add all of those totals up and then compare them to your total overspend for that period. Now here the answer will be one or the other. So let's consider each of those two variables or options. Option one, say your totals for that period resulted in an overspend or a loss of say $75.50. Now here I'm going to use uh, a hypothetical figure. Okay, then say your totals of all your nice to have categories or subcategories, in other words your pleasures or treats, totaled $95. Hence, the difference here between the $75.50 overspend and the $95 um, of what your treats were, that difference equates to $19.50. Technically speaking, the following week or period, you then need to reduce those nice to have or pleasures which, let's be honest, are not critical expenses by that difference of $19.50. Are you still with me so far? If need be, pause the video and replay that particular part. Okay, if you do that, then assuming all the figures or expenses remain the same for the following week or period, which they of course won't, but for the exercise, let's just say they do. Then you will have a zero difference. Now, that is not the answer we are looking for. As we won't, as we don't want to settle uh, uh, with a zero difference. We only want to settle for a surplus. Now, in our third part video, we will be covering putting a budget together. So not to preempt too much, I'm going to say one thing. That is, and without seeing your figures and what you spent your money on for that period, I can guarantee you that you didn't spend on everything that you were spending on, as there are always some payments that will always fall outside of the period that you have just totaled, such as, say, certain debit orders that only run on a certain date of each month or you may have some payments that you only make quarterly or half yearly or even <clears throat> only once a year. Now, I really don't want to burst your bubble here. 
or demoralize you in any way. As I said, I'm here to help you. Now, further to what I've just said, you may also not have had any car repairs or maintenance for that pair and or doctor's bill, etc. All of these payments will show up later, hence the importance of having a budget, as that is where you build in all of those odd payments to ensure that you can cover those expenses as and when they arise. Now, let's consider the second option, which could be, sadly, the worst option. We say your overspend was also the same amount of, uh, what is it, $75.50. But when you totaled all your pleasures or nice-to-haves, they this time totaled less, say, let's call it $65. Okay. Then technically speaking, even if you cut all of your pleasures of $65 for the following period, and let's say, assuming the income and expenditure will be the same, which they won't, you would still have a deficit or shortage or difference between the $75.50 minus the $65 being the difference of $10.50, still short. Here you need to pour yourself another cup of coffee. Make it this time a little stronger. But now interrogate your categories and even your subcategories further. Here you need to look at all your other expenditure for that period to see where you possibly overspent by at least that $10.50, as you now need to cut expenses even further by that amount. You have to become a little bit like a detective here, looking for that suspect to the crime and pinpoint it to at least one or more categories where you know you could have spent that little bit less. Now, please don't despair, as you are still here with me at this stage. And as you are, you are already 100% better off than where you were before. You may not agree with me here, as you would say that your financial situation is no better, and that with this deficit still doesn't help you, and you are now worse off. Don't become like an ostrich and stick your head in the sand. No, you are not worse off, as what you have gained is now some knowledge, and you now have a tool or tools which you've never had before. It's like you're now owning your own crystal ball, so start using it. Okay, let's move on. Now open your next page for the coming week or month. And here we will start afresh, but this time we are now better armed and prepared as we have learned a lesson from the previous week, month or periods deficit of say as per my last example the $75.50 or whatever your figure is. I now want you to merely as a guide to divide that deficit out by the total number of days in that period that you're working to. Let's say we were capturing weekly, then it is seven days. And my example uh, deficit was $75.50. So if we divide the $75.50 by seven, we get an average result of 10.7857. Okay, well, $10 just over $10.78. So let's round that up to, let's call it $11 a day, which we now need to save or cut. Now, that, are, that is, of course, just to break even. Assuming your income and expenditure remains the same, as we need to re recover some of that loss. So Let's add at least a further, say, minimum 10% on for starters, as we need to edge ourselves into, 
of course, a new way of thinking bit by bit. Okay, now with that extra approximately 10% added, we now have, say, let's call it $12 per day to spend less. Okay, I can appreciate that you may say, I can't do that, as your first thought goes to your rent or your grocery bill. And you may only be spending approximately $20 on groceries per day. Well, here you are wrong. Again, look at all the categories and subcategories that you spend on for that period. And if you divide that $12 by all your categories or whatever, i.e. $12 divided by 10, being 10 categories, that equates to $1.20. So that would mean you now need to try and cut only $1.20 per category spend per day. Okay, <laughs> now that doesn't sound too bad or too hard now. It's easier to work with it when you start splitting it and breaking it down over and um, sharing it out over a number of other expenses. What this is called is breaking everything down. And if you do that, you will make a huge difference to your thinking and your spending. Obviously, there will be some expenses that you won't be able to cut or reduce, such as maybe your rent, but others you will be able to cut if you put your mind to it. Now, you could very well find that some categories you could cut a little bit more than $1.20 per day. If so, then do it. Make this your goal or challenge for the following week or period ahead. Now, set your goals for the coming period as you will now have a good idea of what your next period's income will be. Therefore, you know what you previously spent but this time you have a target, or let's call it a mini budget, to reduce each category by, say, a minimum of $1.20. Consider getting yourself, if need be, a little notepad and keep it in your purse or car. And before you spend a penny, pull out your notepad, look at what you did last week, and set a figure in your head of what you're going to spend now, before you even go into the shop. Checking and adding up as you go. Doing, of course, the best you can to beat your target. Now, when the end of that period comes, be it the day or week, sit down and capture all your, your receipts and repeat the entire process that we previously covered. Right down to subtracting your income from your expenditure gain to establish your new end result. Let's start off with the absolute worst situation. You find that you still have a deficit. Okay, this is a minor setback. Hence, simply then go back to the drawing board, so to speak, and repeat the entire process of what we previously did. Set your next target for the following period, and this time, just try a lot harder. If, say, the outcome is a break-even situation, then give, give yourself only a half a pat on your back, as we will still only settle for a surplus. We've got to be hard on ourselves here, guys. We've got to, if we're going to improve our situation. If you achieved a surplus, don't go out and celebrate now, as that won't do your financial situation any good you will have the time and the money to do that much later. But at the moment, we still have a lot of work to do. And I now want you to continue this now, literally, for the rest of your life. As the final results of your hard work will come, come your end, and they will be awesome, trust me. But you've got to stick to it. Also, don't despair, as some periods you're going to have some crazy unexpected expenses which will set you back a little, but just keep persevering. The next step will be 
my next video, which is part two, where I'll give you a few hints and tips on how to shop and save a dollar or a euro here and there, plus a number of other ways. This will then be followed by a third video where we are then going to cover putting a budget together. That will be your plan or your blueprint to improve your overall financial situation even further. And remember, no pain equals no gain. And at the end of it all, when you look back, you will say it was well worth the effort and the struggle. Now, just before I end up with my usual farewell speech, please let me know in the comment section below or email me on how you have got along and if I can do anything else to help you further. And I mean that with all sincerity. Thanks for watching. I do hope that you have learned something new here today. And if so, please leave a comment below as your feedback is very important in improving the overall quality of material being presented. Now, if you know someone that could benefit from this video, then please share it with them as your help and support is really appreciated. Now, please don't forget to click the thumbs up, like button below, subscribe, hit the bell if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next time with another How To With Basics video. Bye.